Hello everyone and welcome to my classic leveling tips and tricks guide. In this guide I'll share all the tips and tricks that I usually do when I'm leveling a fresh character. And I've also added a timeline and timestamps so you can easily skip to each trick. In the starting zone there will most likely be a quest where you need to pick up at least one quest item. In the gnome and dwarf starting area you for example have to pick up three different items in order to complete a quest. These items or objectives usually have a respawn time of 10 seconds. 10 seconds doesn't sound like a lot, but when there's like 50 or 100 people competing for this item, then you'll spend too much time waiting for this. So I recommend you to skip these quests in the starting zones. In the starting zones, a lot of people will also compete for the same monsters. As a caster, it might be difficult to get the tag, and therefore I often unequip my weapon. When you use unarmed, on no weapon, you will also attack faster compared to your melee weapon. And this is even the case for some melee classes. The moment you have to attack, you can just equip your weapon or start to cast as a caster. Some quests will also tell you to slay different monsters, sometimes even a boss. Therefore, I recommend you to make a macro where you type in slash tar, or you can also type in slash target. And then you type the name of the creature or monster that you're looking for. In the next line, you can for example have auto attack, or you can type in an instant spell. This will allow you to get the tag a lot faster. You can even open up the keybind menu and find target markers. The targeting thing will allow you to set an icon above the target. For example, skull, or maybe even moon. This will allow you to find the target if it's far away or even behind an object. Another thing I always like to pick up is items with spirit. Usually if you're low on gold, you will most likely win for this, but else I recommend you to keep this, especially if you don't want to use first aid or food all the time. Now I'll show you how my region is without spirit gear. And next up I'll show you my region if I equip my spirit gear. As you can see, I reach in health a lot faster and this is not even with a lot of spirit. As you're leveling, then you might also be unlucky and not find any bags but I recommend you to buy bags whenever you have enough silver to spare. For example, a bag is usually 5 silver for 6 slots. 5 silver is of course a lot at the lower levels, but still you don't need to find many items before you will be able to earn all of it back. Else you might have to throw away stuff if you don't have enough inventory, and it's not a lot of items you have to throw away before you have already wasted 5 silver. Another big mistake that I see a lot of people not doing is to buy water at low level. The level 5 water is of course a bit expensive, but it also makes you regen a lot faster and get back into fight and level faster. When I'm speed leveling as a mage, I usually don't even train my own conjure water and food. The reason for this is because it's a lot worse compared to what you can buy at the current level. For example, the conjure water takes time to craft, you have to stand still and you even spend mana. The conjure water that you make is so bad compared to the milk. The milk is almost three times as good compared to conjure water, but of course be careful with all the milk or water that you buy at the winters, because you also need to be able to afford the other spells that your class need. Next up is an add-on that I recommend all mini classes to get, and this add-on is auto swing. It will simply indicate whenever you are going to do your next auto swing, and this is going to be important in case you want to level fast. I see a lot of people just going into melee and standing in melee range all the time. Instead you should do your auto swing, backpedal and wait for it to indicate that you can go in and do a melee attack again. By doing this you will avoid a lot of damage and therefore you will also be able to get into a new fight a lot faster. Another thing that I recommend people to do is to pick up first aid. First aid will allow you to craft bandages and heal. And this you can even do as a warrior when you use blood rage to maintain rage and even heal at the same time. Talking about professions, then I also recommend people to pick up skinning in case they don't plan to speed level. Skinning will allow you to get a lot of raw gold because the letter you simply just winter. There's no need for you to post this on auction house in the beginning of a fresh server because the price for letter is next to nothing. So just winter all of this to make some easy gold. When you're out there in the open world, always make sure to not turn your back against the monsters. This will cause you to have a chance of getting dazed. And when you get dazed, there's also a chance that you get caught by a lot of monsters and end up dying. 
Instead, you could always go to keybinds and replace the turn left and right with strafe. I usually keybind this to A and D, and this will allow me to strafe. But why is this so important? Well, when you're strafing, you can for example do your auto attacks, but you can also use your instant care spells. And when you strafe, you cannot get dazed, because you're not turning your back, but you're still moving at the same speed as if you were running forward without strafing. As you kill monsters, you'll most likely also be able to find a green or a rare item. If you don't like gold that badly, then I recommend you to keep the rare items for later on. People have next to no gold right now, and you will spend a lot of time to post these on the auction house, and you also have to pay a deposit, so in case you don't sell these items, then you will just end up wasting money and time. When you're out there leveling, you will most likely find a lot of creatures that is close to each other, and when you pull one of these, it might also pull additional targets. This can be really bad, because when you try to kite these, and if you attack one of the targets, all of them will continue to follow you. In some situations, this can become handy in case you want to pull three targets away and then kill them all at the same time. But if you want to make sure that the rest of the monsters is evading, then there's a method for this. If your character has some sort of AoE ability or an item that does AoE damage, then you need to use this. By hitting all the targets at the same time when you pull, then all of these targets will not share the same evade thing. What I mean with this evade thing is that if you continue to attack one of the targets, then all of the other targets will eventually start to evade. And the reason for this is because you pull them by doing damage at the beginning. That way you can also pull one of the targets away, the remaining will start to evade and you can kill this target. This is an amazing thing, especially if the monsters is a bit difficult to kill one by one. Here's another example of how you should not do it in case you want to do one target at a time. So here I do one single target at one of these and then the remaining is being pulled. Now we have a bad situation because these will all continue to follow me as long as I do damage to one of them. When I level a fresh character, then it's important that I get ahead of the pack. Therefore, I also use an add-on which is called Questy. At the top right corner, you'll see the minimap. And here there should also appear an icon. When you click this, you'll open up Questy and at the top right corner of this add-on, you can also find Questy options. When this window appears, then there's two things we have to enable. It's auto-complete and auto-accept quests. When you have enabled these, you're ready to go on. Now whenever you go to a quest giver, you can pick up quests pretty much instantly. And you can also hand them in pretty much instantly. Questy will also add some icons to your map. For example, where you can pick up new quests, but also mailbox and even flight masters. The add-on will also tell you where you have to go for each quest. When you are about to hand in a quest, then you might be able to pick different rewards. In case you don't need these rewards, then it's important that you pick the most expensive item. If you do this, you'll earn more gold in the end, and this will also allow you to train your abilities and get your mount a bit faster. Therefore, I also recommend people to get the add-on better winter price. When you go to a new location, you might also want to change your hearthstone at the innkeeper. But before I do this, then I always move a bit away and then I set my hearthstone. The reason for this is because next time when I'm going to hearthstone, I'll be teleported to the exact location when I did this. So instead of being teleported right to the innkeeper, then I'll be teleported a few yards away. And also at the direction I was facing when I set my hearthstone. When the starting zones is crowded on a fresh launch, then I usually group up a few times. I usually group up when I have to slay different monsters for a quest, because this will allow me to complete the quest a bit faster. By completing the quest a bit faster compared to other people, then I will also be able to unlock another quest, and this quest other people might not have yet, because they haven't completed the pre-quest. Therefore, I will also get ahead of the pack, and this will allow me to gain more levels compared to the average player. Once you are a few levels ahead, you will also have no competition, and now questing will be so much easier compared to if you were fighting against 1000 players for the same monster. If you accidentally pull an enemy, then I also recommend you to use the different objects. You can use these to avoid damage, like you see right here, I jump over, I can then jump back, and that way I might have a higher chance of getting away. On top of this, also make sure to always follow the road. By doing this, you increase the chance of you not pulling an enemy. Next up is Rested Experience, a leveling add-on 
that will level you as efficient as possible from level 1 and all the way up to max level. They have a level 1 to 20 version for free, but you can also pay for the full version. They even have a hardcore mode you can enable, and this will try to skip all group quests and even potential areas that could be dangerous. Why I like to use this add-on myself is that you can pretty much no brain. You simply just follow either this arrow or you can look at the minimap or the map and here there will be displayed different numbers that will indicate where you'll need to go next. So instead of spending a lot of time to travel to different areas and so, well then this add-on will also let you know when is the most efficient time to go back to the city to repair, learn your spells and even hand in your quests. And if you would like to level in another zone, well then you can always change this in the configuration and now it will tell you where you will need to start. So where you will need to pick up the first quest to follow the guide. So here's a quick example. Let's say I would like to level in Elven Forest from level 6 to 11. Now I'll go back to the map and it will tell me where I'll need to go first. So as you see here, step 1, step 2 and so on. If you look to the left, it will also tell me what I have to do in each step. So for example, run to Goldshire, talk to an NPC, repair and so on. And as you see now, I'm on step 4. So every time you complete a step, it will now show you on the map where you will need to go next. So yeah, an amazing leveling add-on that is developed by some of the best speed levelers in World of Warcraft. For more information, make sure to check out the description below this video.